I am Tim Burton, the filmmaker, animator, and, and artist behind some uh, timeless classics like The Nightmare Before Christmas and The Corpse Bride. I really like what these two are doing here, so if you haven't already, subscribe to the only YouTube channel endorsed by Tim Burton himself. That's me. No, we're not actually endorsed by Tim Burton. But subscribe anyway, or we will take all of your cookies! That. I don't work for you. I'm sensing a little bit of tension amongst the crew. Not, Not a, a crew. crew. Now it's time for a One Piece review. At last. We know a lot of people have already done reviews, but we decided that since we are trying to do one video a week now that is going to be our remedy of the week, which this is, mm -hmm. we decided that we'd pick things that we like rather than things that we just want to talk about because that way we can have... This is uh, this video, as I said, be our remedy of the week in lieu of not having it on our regular psychosynopsis anymore. And also so that we can make videos actually talking about things we like. Now, One Piece live action was a big surprise for me. I am someone who didn't necessarily read the manga. I did watch a little bit of the anime, but the pacing for me was very slow. It does require a lot of patience, believe me. And I just couldn't get into it because of the pacing. Pacing is very important for me. It needs to be well paced or I cannot watch it. It's just how it is for me. But, li but One Piece live action was very well paced for him. Yes, it was. I really enjoyed it. I know there were some things that stuck out to me that I didn't like. For example, I think the biggest thing was Nojiko. Yeah, she looked weird. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I have nothing against, I know they race swap her, I have nothing really against that because they didn't make a big deal about it. Notice yeah. how that is. If you don't make a big deal about a race swap, nobody cares. Indeed. I'm pointing it out because I thought that the blue hair clashed very badly with how she looked. Yeah. Again, I understand they were limited, but that's just my opinion. But otherwise, this show is great. If you have not watched it, it's well paced. It's got a little anime humor here and there and stuff like that, but it needs that. Live action anime should not feel like not an anime. It should feel like the anime was translated. And it did. Mm -hmm. There were definitely changes, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. I would give it mm, 7.5 out of 10, maybe 8 out of 10 on a good day. That's my rating of it. Yeah, for me, as someone who loves the anime, and you can even add, look into one of our past live streams to find out just how much I love the anime... I was blown away by the accuracies. I could really see Odesima's hand in everything. The way they recreated some very, very iconic moments, like Zoro saying that he'll never lose again, and Nami begging Luffy for help, all were just perfect. And I was just fangirling most of the time. I thought the costumes were great, the acting was great. The humor was there, everything was there, and I just, I loved it. So I give it a solid 8 out of 10, as someone who loves the anime. I would be more considered a normie in this case, but even I enjoyed it. And I like anime, but I just couldn't get into this. But the biggest thing to kick away from this is, yes, this wasn't perfect. It was absolutely not perfect. 100%. Nothing ever will be. But if this, we're going to get more adaptations of anime, this is how you do it. Indeed. Will Netflix adhere to this? Will it still be something that's good in the future? We don't necessarily know. We do know it got greenlit for season two. I look forward to seeing how they do Chopper and the Al the entire Alabasta arc. Alabasta is a pretty long arc. We'll see. Maybe they'll make it more episodes. I don't know. I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. I know there's some controversy around it due to one of the one of the characters, and there's you know some people didn't like how certain characters didn't look exactly the way they did in the anime. But you have to keep in mind they did have to deal with some level of realism, but at the same time they left so much of the core anime there, and that's what they needed to do. It's what they didn't do with Cowboy Bebop, and that's why it failed so spectacularly. Especially that because uh, Cowboy Bebop did not have its creator on board. And the only reason this ended up good is because Oda was, in char was put in charge. Because he refused to let a bad product be put out there. And anything that didn't meet his approval had to be redone. The creator of Cowboy Bebop actually tried to watch the Netflix adaptation. And he said he had about 10 minutes or so and he had to turn it off. And that's saying something. This is an adaptation done right. And I really do hope we see more of it like this in the future. 
My concern is that it's going to bring up wave of people trying to do this and they're not going to do it to the degree that they need to. But maybe Netflix has said that they learn from this. I hope they do because I want more of this because we need more of this. And it brought a lot of new people into the anime and a lot of people into the manga. And it gave us all something that we universally praise for the most part. And we need more of that because everybody says we're always so negative and we're not. We just are passionate. Go watch One Piece. Do it. That is all we have for this week. Let us know what you think in the comments below and also make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe with notifications on so you do not miss your weekly therapy session. Or you will be charged. Gothic, Gothic therapy, therapy out. out.